Coronavirus cases in Maryland are now up to 44,000, and more than 2,000 people have died. Hospitalizations are the lowest they've been in the past month as people get ready to celebrate Memorial Day weekend. For the first time in 20 years, AAA is not issuing a travel forecast for the holiday. The CDC warns travel can increase the chance of spreading the virus. WJZ investigator Mike Helgen reports from Ocean City. The beach is open, but with restrictions. Good morning. I'm on the boardwalk in Ocean City. We've seen quite a few people here, and let's take a look out onto that beach. It's not been the best beach weather here, but we've still seen a number of visitors from both in and out of state. The unofficial start to summer is here, but this is a Memorial Day weekend like none other in Ocean City, with the coronavirus pandemic creating uncertainty. I think we're all realists in the fact that it's not going to be the same as the summer of 2019. Even with the chilly, rainy, windy weather, people still flock to Maryland's main beach resort where many prepared to welcome visitors. So I think it's it's really good for people to come out if they can get out, especially since we've all been in the house for, you know, almost three months. The Smith family from Baltimore could not eat inside, but they still enjoyed some pizza on the boardwalk and are glad they made the trip. It's not a spike in cases just because you've reopened. So I think we'll be going to phase two soon. The numbers decrease every day. You know, hospitalizations are down. The vacancy signs were on and some hotels opened for the first time this weekend. Ocean City relaxed lodging restrictions earlier than expected. The pandemic could benefit Ocean City this season with people not flying and choosing to stay closer to home. If they do come to Ocean City, I mean, the beach is wide. There's plenty of room to social distance. It's an unprecedented season. We don't know what we're in store for yet. The owner of Park Place Jewelers on the boardwalk praised the state for allowing retailers to finally open. Many are just trying to stay afloat. We hope that they'll come down, relax. They want to get outside and enjoy it. It's been quite an ordeal for a lot of people. They are promoting social distancing here. You can see about every other bench is blocked off so people don't sit together. They've also got signs up. This is something they started doing about two weeks ago. And we're finally seeing some sun on what's been a gloomy day here in Ocean City. On the Eastern Shore, Mike Helgren, WJZ. President Trump is deeming religious centers as essential places, and now the Archdiocese of Baltimore is allowing parishes to reopen. In a statement, the Archdiocese says public masses can resume next weekend, but only in areas that are allowing religious gatherings of more than 10 people. They also said each parish must be able to implement precautions to keep the coronavirus from spreading. The White House names Baltimore one of the three COVID-19 hotspots in Maryland. The president is still expected to visit on Monday. Rachel Menetoff with the latest from Baltimore Mayor Jack Young. Please, Baltimore. Mayor Jack Young says this isn't the year to be throwing any parties. Baltimore police are prepared to address violators of the city's stay-at-home order and will also be looking out for anyone who isn't social distancing. We'll all have an amplified presence over the weekend. This additional enforcement comes as Baltimore City reports an 8% increase in positive COVID-19 cases. It now has just under 4,500 cases and 210 people have died, with Southeast Baltimore being one of the hardest hit in the state. Today I'm identifying houses of worship, churches, synagogue, and mosques, as essential places that provide essential services. While city health officials warned that the Baltimore area remains a hot spot, President Trump is directing states to reopen religious centers. In response, the mayor says he can't stop it and will ultimately leave the decision up to the city's ministers. And most of them would look at safety first, they would look at the data first, and they would adhere to what our health professionals are telling us to do. President Trump is slated to visit Baltimore on Monday for a Memorial Day ceremony at Fort McHenry. I would like to make one final plea to the president to visit, to revisit his travel plans. On Friday, Mayor Young again asked the president to skip the event, saying it will be costly to the city and is in defiance of his stay-at-home order. I think he's violating the law. Police Commissioner Michael Harrison says Baltimore police have been working with the Secret Service to ensure proper safety protocols, assuming President Trump does visit Baltimore over the Memorial Day weekend. Reporting in Baltimore, I'm Rachel Menatoff for WJZ. While officials continue removing restrictions across the state, protesters with the group Reopen Baltimore County held a rally in the streets of downtown Towson. <laughs> Thank you. 
The group is calling for even more regulations to be rolled back on restaurants and other businesses facing financial hardship. Anne Arundel County will allow barber shops, beauty salons, and other non essential retail businesses to reopen with limits on June 1st. Yesterday, Baltimore County lifted some restrictions on businesses. Avajoy Burnett tells us the governor's plans to ramp up testing. As Maryland slowly reopens, the White House announced three jurisdictions here are on the national radar for high coronavirus rates. The number one metro with the highest positivity rate is the District of Columbia, which includes Northern Virginia and um, Maryland, Montgomery County, and PG County. Um, that is followed by Baltimore, Chicago, and Minneapolis. Baltimore City still has strict stay-at-home orders, but Friday morning, Baltimore County started allowing more businesses to open up. Barbershops, salons, and some retailers are on that list, but there's a strict 10-person limit. As more people venture out, the governor says the state quintupled the number of contact tracers to track and isolate anyone who may have been exposed to the virus. Contact tracing is the tool that we have now to go out and to suppress this virus. This is the way, because we don't have a vaccine, this is the way that we can prevent the spread. Walmart will now do testing at three locations, two of which are on the eastern shore, where clusters emerged in poultry packing plants. The state's 1,200 pharmacies have also been authorized to lift that load. Some sites require appointments, but a doctor's note or even symptoms are not necessary. Maryland now has 44,424 confirmed COVID-19 cases. 2,092 people have died in the state, and another 115 cases are possibly linked to the virus. Every one of those numbers is a person. Hospitalizations are trending down, but the Department of Health said the state will change course if the numbers spike again. Hoping we can go from stage one to stage two, but if there's a blip, we're going to hold, and if we need to reverse something, then that needs to happen too. Even though barbershops and salons are able to open up with some restrictions, there are other facilities like nail salons that must remain closed. In Baltimore County, Average Way Burnett for WJZ. Officials are warning of heavy traffic near meal distribution sites in Baltimore. The World Central Kitchen will be giving out free meals from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Now, there are three locations they're giving these meals out at. One is MT Bank Stadium, Lot H, also Old Eastern High School, Johns Hopkins parking lot, and the Baltimore Community College alternate campus on Liberty Heights Avenue. Well, all around the world, graduation ceremonies have been canceled or gone virtual due to the pandemic. And that includes the Naval Academy, who also had to make some changes. And that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you are about to enter. So help you God. While graduates were able to attend the ceremony in person, friends and family had to watch from home. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper gave a pre-recorded keynote address now commissioned as officers. The graduates will go on to serve in the U.S. Navy or Marine Corps.